Yeah. All right, cool. So we're here with Cecil. And uh, what's up, man? Thanks for being here. Yeah, dude. thanks for having me, man. Appreciate so it. he's here in town. We're in San Diego. Uh, he's here for the SDSU like, guest artist. So you guys are going to play some, some charts, do yeah. some of your tunes. Right, yeah. Uh, and they arranged some of them, right? Yeah, Carl, um, I'm blanking on his last name, Sukup. Carl Sukup and, Sukup and I think Chaz. It was Chaz yeah. yeah, arranged uh, two of my tunes for Big Band, which yeah, I'm really cool. excited about, man. So what what kind of tunes, are they just like, did they originate in kind of like small group? Yeah, so I did uh, my debut record uh, last year, last September it was released. Um, oh, okay, cool. And it was with an organ trio, which was oh, like I a... I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I just like, you know, love that format, yeah, so it was yeah. like... You know, I was writing those tunes with that like instrumentation in mind, and like with those specific voices okay, in mind. Yeah, yeah. You know, of the players that I chose. But uh, man, Carl and Chaz just like knocked it out of the park with I what mean, they wrote. Yeah, man, they're both really good arrangers. Yeah, like yeah, I mean, it, it's you know, Carl runs the he like kind of he directs the big band, mm -hmm. and Chaz is you know he he's he's great, man. He's yeah. done all the, yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So that's great, man. So they they really they like re kind of imagined. Some yeah, of your stuff? All right, sweet. Definitely. And is it going to be like proper big band? Is that what it is? I believe so, Okay, yeah. cool. As far right, as I know, yeah. All right, cool. So um, maybe we could talk about just kind of your journey a little bit. Sure. If you could kind of sum it up real quick. I know sure. we don't have too much time. Yeah. But like I kind of know a little bit about you already just from kind of online and stuff because, mm -hmm. you know, I followed you and, you know, you're online, so it's great. Yeah. But maybe, I don't know, you can give a brief overview and then maybe we can kind of talk about – I want to hear about your – your tours and stuff. Like yeah. What you're doing with yeah, so. Totally. Yeah, I mean, I am from uh, Muskegon, Michigan, originally. Right. It was like in West Michigan, really small um, town, like kind of non-existent music scene. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but my parents were really into music. My dad was really into jazz and like George Benson okay, and West sweet. Montgomery oh, yeah, and George stuff Benson. like that. Uh, so I had heard that music like growing up a lot, um, but I didn't really come into my own as a musician, I guess, until I was like early teens is when I started okay. like checking out music on my own. Okay. Um, and I didn't really start with jazz just because I was like, that's my parents' music. You yeah, know? <laughs> I get it. Um, so I was checking out like Jimi Hendrix and oh, Stevie yeah, Ray Vaughan and Eddie Van Halen and all that about. stuff. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and then got into like metal and shred guys it's and like all classic that kind of guitar. Stuff. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I went to um, Berkeley for a, like summer program when I was 16. And I had a great teacher there, this guy named Kurt Shoemate, who turned me on to um, like officially, I guess, like Grant Green and Kenny okay, Burrell okay, cool. and Wes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I know these guys because okay, like sweet. my parents listened to them. And he was just kind of like, you know, breaking down like what they were doing, like harmonically, like what a two five one is. Right. And I was just like, wow, this is hip, you know. Did, did you kind of, were you interested like immediately or was it? Yeah, okay. definitely. Because okay. the way that he like introduced it to me, it was like, you know, oh, you're into like Albert King and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay, yeah. You would love Grant Green, you know. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny, man, is like when I, I'm from East County and I didn't, I had never heard of jazz. Really? Okay. I mean, I just. I mean, how are you supposed to know something unless they show, you know, yeah, if you don't know? Exactly. So I was really into Hendrix, but then once I kind of found jazz, I was like, oh, well, they're they're just doing, well, that's what Jimmy's doing. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? like, right. So I see what you're saying. Right, yeah. right. Um, and then from there, I went back home um, and I decided that I wanted to go to Berkeley. I was like, this is like my dream school, yeah. you know. Um, and I couldn't, I, I found like a teacher um, who was like probably the best guitar player in the area. Um, and he... This kind is of back home. Back home, okay. yeah. Um, and he, you know, did a lot for, like, just teaching me about, like, theory and harmony and stuff like that. Um, and looking back now, you know, like, I think if I had approached the lessons in the right way, I probably would have gotten more out of it. Okay. Um, but then I, I studied with him for, like, a year, auditioned for Berkeley, got in, um, and then I started studying with that guy again that I studied with during cool. the summer program. But... Um, I think just because of like the surroundings that I was in, you know, mm -hmm. Berkeley isn't like officially like a jazz school, you right. know, like I was, I kind of found myself playing more like fusion and R&B and funk and stuff like that, um, which was, you know, definitely like more my wheelhouse. Like I was just kind of like stepping into jazz. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. Didn't really know many tunes or anything like that. Um, and then like towards the end of my time at Berkeley, um, I got put in this ensemble with all these like really killing like first semester students. Okay. And I was just like, you know, 
not ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> like we were playing all these hard tunes and they were just like shredding and yeah. I was just like kind of barely getting by. Yeah. So I asked like one of the piano players, you know, I was like, what kind of stuff do you practice? And she turned me on to some stuff. Um, and then from there, I was just like, okay, I'm going to be like a, a jazz guitarist. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. It was like a super inspiring, but like also humbling, humbling moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And did you kind of end up going in the shed for a while? Like, yeah, just, I mean, definitely. I, I feel like that everyone's journey kind of ends up, you realize like, oh man, right. Yeah. I got to really sit here and like get in shape. Kinda exactly. Thing. Yeah. Okay. And also around the same time, um, I started, um, seeing my wife, uh, current wife, <laughs> uh, but at the time my girlfriend, uh-huh. and she's from Denmark originally. Oh. So um, we went over to Copenhagen uh, for the Copenhagen Jazz Festival. Yeah. And I had like my first jam session experience. Oh. But it wasn't just like a regular jam session. It was like with some of my favorite like American jazz musicians alive. Like who? Like Ambrose Akamusery oh. and Rodney Green and wow. Jonathan Blake was there. Aaron Parks as well. Cool, okay. Um, so I got to play with all those guys and um again like definitely got humbled because okay. you know, like i didn't know any tunes but it's like learning on the bandstand yeah and that's, exactly yeah I get and it. then i went back home and i just like hit the shed like crazy okay like, just transcribing a ton and like trying to seek out a bunch of playing opportunities yeah. in boston and back home okay yeah. yeah nice all right sweet man that's great yeah. and then i know that you i mean i had i've kind of found you online really mm-hmm. just from like you know guitar videos yeah um but and then I also saw you did the uh, what the the Herbie thing. Did mm-hmm. you, you were like top three or something? Yeah, yeah I got the, third place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean that's you basically made it if you're top three. Right. That's, tight. <laughs> that's sick. Yeah, it was a, a very like surreal experience, you know, because like yeah, I so, feel like in the jazz community we like I mean back then it was like you talk about the monk competition, right? Like, what's the instrument going to be for the monk competition right, right, right. this year? Like who's in the monk institute? And then you know to like find out that I was a semi-finalist even I was just like wow like this is unbelievable, well dude. one of my favorite musicians who's from San Diego is Joshua White okay yeah piano and, player yeah yeah and so Joshua heavy. yeah heavy. and yes yeah, so, I mean th- I mean they're picking you know they they know what they're picking right. I mean not that competitions matter mm-hmm. that much like ultimately but I mean it's really cool that you know you got to meet who was there was Matheny there Matheny Schofield was there uh Russell Malone, Ooh. Lee Rittenauer, who I had met before um, and done some stuff with him, and Lionel Luweke. Oh, that's so cool, Man. dude. Yeah, it was, like, just stacked. So what was, did you get to, like, kind of hang out? Like, I mean, obviously talk to a few of them? Or a how little did, bit, okay. yeah. Like, I mean, they kind of distance us from the yeah, judges just I so, like, we wouldn't really have any, like, influence. Sway, yeah, or, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but at the end, like, once uh, the winners were announced, like, we had, like, a, a gala type thing cool. and, like... Like, uh, got that was probably kind of surreal. It was very surreal. <laughs> and like, um, man, one thing I'll never forget is John Schofield was like, man, I'm trying to get my picking technique together. And I've been checking out this George Benson thing. And I was just like, back up. <laughs> what are you Dude, talking that's about? so funny. <laughs> the, honestly, though, that's like makes me feel better because it's like if that guy's saying that, then like I don't like my the voice in my head you're not crazy you know right. what i'm saying it's like <laughs> yeah. you're kind of self-conscious all the time trying to get better but that's right. good like that's that's cool yeah definitely. wow yeah, yeah they were all just like super nice cats you know that's crazy man i mean that's just jazz. i mean i got to meet matheny the other day okay cool because he was here he played wow. a solo concert oh man i bet that was beautiful it was crazy dude like yeah. he and i mean classic matheny he played for like two hours straight yeah man. just solo guitar yeah man and he had like this midi, it, it was like hooked up MIDI, like he usually does, and, but like it was triggering a whole like array of percussion instruments behind him. Wow! So it was like an orchestra, but no one's up there. It's right, just right. him, and it's somehow it's you know it's Matheny. He's yeah. a little genius. So like he like triggered, <laughs> and it's like he's playing. It was crazy. Yeah, dude. like man, yeah. I saw him a couple years ago in uh, Phoenix. Um, and it was just like one of the best shows I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Like again, they played for like two hours and like. He played all the hits. That's know? cool, man. That's so cool. <laughs> so, um, and then, so you you do this competition. It goes well. What kind of happened? Did that, did that kind of like catapult you? I'm sure that helped, right? Yeah, okay. definitely. I mean, f- definitely for like getting my name out mm-hmm. there and like, um, I guess like making people aware of me on the scene yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but for me, it was also like just really important in my development because it kind of like helped me like sort of trim the fat in mm-hmm. my playing, yeah, you yeah. know, um, at least where I'm, where I thought I was coming from as like an artist, you know. I was, so what, what was, some, well, I just kind of want to know, what was some mm-hmm. of the, the fat you're trimming? Sure. I mean, like, 
you know, coming out of music school, um, I think that there were a lot of like concepts mm-hmm. that were being introduced to me that like either, you know, I wasn't really ready for or they weren't exactly like where I was coming from musically, like okay. my background, you know, just like more like contemporary or modern stuff. And I love that stuff, you know. Right. Like yeah, Kurt we talked and, about this. Yeah, okay. Lage <laughs> and Mike Marino and all those cats. But just like. I think because of my upbringing yeah. and like the music that I had checked out, it just mm-hmm. wasn't something that like clicked for me. Yeah, you I know? get you. And at that point, I was like, okay, like I know now sort of like what direction I have to go in in order I to see. like continue to develop. You know? And like you're kind of and you're being your honest self, mm-hmm. like so you right. kind of know it reaffirms like, oh no, I like you know I'm gonna go in this yeah. direction maybe. Exactly. Okay, I see. Exactly. No okay. shade on any of those. No, no, no. Cats, I get. You know, yeah. I totally get what you're saying, man. Yeah. I, I think that's great. I mean, and to realize it, and like you know, act on it. I think that's, I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I mean, I mean, yeah, everyone has their own sound. That's the thing. And that's the hardest part is like just being you. Right. And if that's you and you know that, like no one can tell you. you Exactly. I think that's cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I got to, I'm curious about, I know you're on the road with, um, how do you say, how do you say, you say, (laughs) so he goes by, uh, chief Zion Atunde Ajua now, but, uh, for short, we just say chief Ajua. Okay. Um, but formerly known as Christian Scott. Um, and I started playing with him in May. Cool. Um, and that just kind of got set up through social media. Really. That's great. Like he hit me up on Instagram. That's so tight. Like in December, 2022. Um, and he was like, Hey man, love your playing. Would love to play in the new year. And then like, Weeks later, he was like, I got a gig for you. Dude, that's so cool. And that was just like so refreshing and like encouraging because I've had that happen a couple times before where nothing materializes. Okay. <laughs> oh, I see. And that was like very discouraging, but this was just cool to see somebody just like act on it. And he like followed, right yeah, away. he followed through. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that, and it's cool because I mean, the reason I know you really is from the internet. Right. And I'm, mm-hmm. I mean, dude, the whole reason we're doing this is like, I'm really in on the, like, I really like it. Mm-hmm. I think that's. I mean, obviously that's the future, but I think it's cool that like, I think we're in an era where like professionals like yourself are online. Right. Whereas, Mm -hmm. you know, 10 years ago, you were probably in the practice room. Right. Exactly. I mean, just to be real. It's like, so, and it's, and it's, and there's some people that are really successful online that, you know, beforehand, but I think now we're, you know, we're in the era of like, which is great. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's cool to see whether it's like an auto mechanic that runs a shop and he, he just posts, he knows everything about every you know yeah about and it's just like he puts he has still has a shop but he has a whole online persona too right. which is like you know he's got a i don't know it's just cool because you just like you're saying it's like now you know you're getting hit up right from you know i yeah. just think that's cool yeah definitely so, man yeah so what is it like what's it like on the road with him like are it, you I, you're into it obviously yeah because we talked about this before definitely yeah. yeah i mean it was um Definitely, like, really scary at first. Cause, okay. like, you know, I told him when he – he called me um, shortly after he messaged me on Instagram just to kind of, like, rap with me and, like, I guess, like, understand where I was coming from and that kind of thing. And, like, he was telling me sort of, like, what direction he was kind of trying to so go in musically. can I ask you about that? Like, what yeah, did he sure. – what did he kind of – like, what was that conversation like? I'm just curious yeah, from, like totally. – like, I don't know. It's cool to see him have, like, a vision, mm-hmm. and I'm curious, like, how he kind of – communicates that to you yeah so he's trying to um i guess i mean he doesn't like the the j word jazz i get you know, it no, but, I get yeah it. <laughs> but he's trying to step outside of the i guess like modern jazz or contemporary okay. jazz circles and kind of like i guess just like reach wider audiences okay and i think part of that is like you know he's playing less trumpet now um he started playing this uh it's called ajua's bow which is like an instrument that he created with okay. a um, instrument builder that's sort of like a i think i've seen that yeah it's like a west african like ngoni hybrid yeah it looks like a is that what it's called ngoni yeah okay mm-hmm. i think yeah it's I, like a hybrid of an ngoni and a kora that's it that's yeah, what i was thinking exactly. a kora yeah. okay um, so he's trying to go more in that direction and like kind of fuse the sort of West African vibe with like rock, like okay. Radiohead kind of vibe, you know. Sick. Yeah, man. it's right. been really fun, man, just to kind of like get to like throw on the distortion. Yeah, and like bro. Play as loud as you want. I get it, man. <laughs> Trust me, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and he was just, you know, in that conversation, he was just trying to see if like, you know, I was open to that and like okay. what direction I was coming from musically because he kind of only knew me from like my Instagram yeah, videos yeah. and he was like, okay, like clearly this guy is like, you know, he got his instrument. Yeah, together. you can play. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what did what did you what did you kind of tell him? I mean, I was just telling him that like, 
I was also kind of trying to step outside of like, yeah, the, that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> the jazz sort of thing. Um, that's just, perfect. Yeah, just because of like the stuff that I was hearing, it was kind of like I felt like I, I found a, a way to um, fuse a lot of the things that I was listening to in a way that was, again, like true to me, mm-hmm. you know, rather than like, you know, like a, a cosmic gumbo or whatever. You yeah, know? I see yeah. what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And what are what are some of these things that you're into, like maybe mm-hmm. now? Are they different than before, obviously, or sort of? They're rooted in, I mean, like root, how how is yeah. that? Rooted still, like definitely in my uh, development. Like I mentioned, like checking out like a lot of Hendrix stuff mm-hmm. and Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I've kind of like gotten a new appreciation for that stuff. Hundred percent. As well as like like I've been listening to a ton of like Sean Lane recently, okay. and like Ingve Malmsteen. Oh, okay, and, yeah. Uh, Paul Gilbert and okay. cats like that. Just, wow, like, yeah. Know, like heavy. That's like, cool, guitar dude. Rock stuff. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I'm I'm working on a record right now. Um, that's kind of like trying to fuse like the the shred thing with like math rock and jazz and okay prog and yeah, stuff yeah. like that sweet man know? all right sweet that's super cool yeah. i mean so how do you go about when you're so i got two questions i mm-hmm. guess like are you guys playing on the road are you playing most of Christ, christian stuff right okay mm-hmm. um and how does that work like did you guys rehearse are you guys right. reading charts or mm-hmm. you, i'm guessing maybe you're not or i don't like what is yeah. that like so he sent me just like a huge Google Drive folder, okay. um, like when he found out that I was like down and, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of um, like had that phone call. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and it had like some kind of loose sketches of some of the tunes, but he was just like, just listen to the records. Okay, yeah. And then we, um, the first gig I played with them was in May in New Orleans um, at NOCA, which is like a, a performing arts high school, I think, that okay. he went to. Um, and like, we just did a sound check that was like three hours. Didn't really like rehearse, like, Mm -hmm. you know, we would play through stuff and he would kind of like make like fine tune a little bit, but, um, like we weren't reading charts or anything. It was kind of just like, we've all listened to the music. Yeah. You just learned it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And is it like, like, is it fun to just like, I'm, I'm sure you're having fun just kind of shredding over that stuff. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, like. The first thing I told him um, when I talked to him on the phone was like, dude, I've been listening to you since I was like in eighth grade, <laughs> like literally, like I, I told my mom, uh, I called her after he called me and I was like, mom, you'll never believe he yeah. just called me. And I, she remembers that I used to show her this video of him playing like in Paris okay. or something where um, it's like Matt, Ste- you know, Matt Stevens, the guitar yeah. player, he's taking a solo and like Christian's off to the side, like, come on, motherfucker. <laughs> like, and I was like, Mom, this is so cool. Like, <laughs> like as a 14-year-old. That's so funny, like, dude. That's cool. That's great. But, man. yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, like, super freeing, you know, because okay. he doesn't really, like, tell you anything. It's yeah. kind of just, like, be yourself. No, that's you great, know? man. Yeah. I think that's I think that's great. Yeah. Um, all right, sweet. So what what is some of the stuff you're doing, like, not, like that's your stuff? Like, you're saying you're working on a new record. Yeah. Um, what are I, you, you kind of, you made it seem like you're, you might be moving somewhere or right. Yeah. I don't wait. I don't know if you want to tell everyone. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, um, so I'm on leave, uh, from Berkeley college of music right now. I was teaching there for like the last two years. Um, but like the travel schedule started picking mm-hmm. up and I just thought it kind of made sense to, um, at least take a break, you know, from yeah, that and, and yeah. just to not have to like balance both. Yeah. Um, yeah. And with that, you know, it kind of allowed me to have more like freedom to work on my original music and stuff like that. So um, my wife and I have been thinking about moving to we were initially considering New York um, or L.A., but then we were thinking about like trying to be close to family. So Dallas is also kind of thrown in the the bush, you know. Sweet, man. Well, I think I mean, you can go wherever you want, you know, ultimately. (laughs) So that's that's what's cool. And, you know, you're online, people, you know, mm. it's only going to get easier, I feel mm. like, for you. So that's great. Thanks, man. Uh, what, are, what are some things, like, I'm just curious from a guitar perspective. Like, when you're sitting down and you're just playing, at, like, you know, you're just at the house. How mm. do you, what are you working on? Are, are you, do you set aside time to, like, like for me, it helps to, like, okay, now I'm going to be creative. I'm going to try mm. and write something new. Or, mm-hmm. you know, I got to work on this because I got this gig. Or, like, mm-hmm. how do you kind of navigate playing and i know some of my students might watch this Mm -hmm. just like i don't know maybe some i don't know not that your routine i hate when people ask that but it's just like i don't know i just find it i get curious of like i know what i think when i sit down and like kind of play and just think about things Mm -hmm. i'm just curious how you maybe approach some stuff yeah totally i mean 
recently, um, like probably in the last like half year or so, I feel like most of my practice time has just been dedicated to like getting better at the material that I'm playing with right. Chiefspan. Um, and just like finding new approaches mm -hmm. and like different ways that I can kind of fill the space, you yeah. know. Um, but like when I just kind of sit down to like shed and like improve myself as a musician, I try to keep it like as loose as possible. Okay. Um, just I, I don't know, that's like always kind of worked well for me and not like you know having a really regimented right, yeah. schedule and like oh, I have to do this at this time, right? Because you know. I've tried like creating a practice routine and usually what happens is I'll like, it'll work for like a couple days and then like I'll get to like the fifth or sixth day yeah. and I'm just like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, today. you're kind of forcing it. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, I get you. I get it. Um, and for me, like what I've found is there's two things that allow me to like sustain a way of practicing and that it has to be something that I'm really like, um, I really enjoy doing, you mm -hmm. know, like I have fun doing it and also it has to like move me forward. Like okay. I can't just be like noodling for yeah, I get you. three hours a day or something like that. Um, so like usually I'll just kind of sit down and like pick a tune to play, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's like one of Chief's tunes or like a standard mm -hmm. or an original of mine or something like that. And then I'll just like play it for like two or three hours basically mm -hmm. and like look for new approaches i don't know if i mentioned maybe mentioned this yesterday but like i'm really into this like idea of editing yourself yeah you were saying this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so like as i'm playing through a tune um i just like stop myself like when i do something that i didn't mean to do mm -hmm. or, like something that's not really what i'm hearing or like i'm just kind of letting my fingers move mm -hmm. or something like that uh, and then I kind of go back in what I'm doing. And sometimes I'll record myself, so it's a little bit easier to do this. But um, usually I'm trying to stay, like, very conscious of, like, every phrase that I play mm -hmm. so that I can go back and say, like, oh, how can I work my way into that a little bit um, in a way that's, like, more indicative of what direction I'm trying I to go mean. in. So, know? like, very in intentful. Yeah, And totally. then if it's not, you kind of go back and edit. Yeah. Think about it. Mm -hmm. And even if it's good or or bad, I guess, right. yeah. however you want to think. Okay, yeah. I see Okay, real quick, dude, I changed my mind. Can we shut that door? Sorry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no worries. I forget it gets loud when these students... Yeah, just push it. There you go. All good. So, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, though. That's a good... Mm -hmm. Because... I see what you mean. Because even, like, on a gig, if you do something, whether it's good or bad, mm -hmm. sometimes it kind of sticks with you. Right. And you kind of will be thinking of that on the way home. Or, exactly. Or, oh, I should have done this. Or, yeah. Or, I really like this. And how did I get there? Or I didn't like this. And how did I get there? Right. Or, you know what I mean? Right. So I get what you're saying. Yeah. And do you do you write anything down in the sense of like, I did this idea or, mm. and then I edited it like this. So mm. now I can think like, this, or I don't know. I know that's kind of yeah. abstract. But. No, like, like when I got into this way of practicing, um, I did write some things down, but I just kind of felt like it was, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like, the way that I'm feeling one day won't be the way that right. I feel the next day. So, I like, you. I would, like, look at the ideas and I'd be like, I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what no, I'm hearing, I get it, you know? dude. I get it. And I actually got this um, kind of from two sources, um, this way of practicing. One was, uh, have you heard these, like, Clifford Brown practice tapes? I have. Before? Yeah. Yeah. So he's playing through, I think the tune is called, like, Dizzy Atmosphere. Oh, that's like funny. I was just tune. playing that the other oh, day. Oh, really? Yeah. And he's like, he plays for like 20 minutes. He's just like in a practice room by himself, like no metronome, like no accompaniment or anything. And he keeps stopping himself. And I was listening to it and I was like, why does he keep stopping? And then I noticed that he would stop and then he would play the exact same phrase that he did before, but with like a little different uh, ending. So I was like, oh, he must be like kind of ironing working, out yeah. his mistakes, you know. I see you And mean. then he would play something that it seemed like he liked and then he would like take the horn out of his mouth and sing it. And I was like, okay, wait, where are these tapes again? Is it on YouTube? It's, it's on YouTube. Okay, yeah, all there's, right. So there's like, like three of them maybe. I okay. think it's like, like three like twenty minute sessions or something. Dude, I like just that. found this record. Uh, so I got from running these sessions. This old couple used to come all the time, mm -hmm. and one day they came up and they're like, "Hey, uh, do you want some records?" Well, they're like, "I have, you know, we're gonna. I think they were moving, or I don't remember what it was, but they were like, "Hey, you know, we think you might like them. Mm -hmm. Would you be interested?" And I was like, "Yeah, like." <laughs> So he comes the next week and they bring me a crate. Mm -hmm. And then they come the next week, they bring me a crate. Wow. They gave me like six crates of Man, records. Geez. And some of them are like really, they're like like very avid jazz fans. Yeah. And some of them are like, I think they're, I think they're 
I don't know where they're from, but they're not from the U.S. Mm -hmm. So some of them are like European labels and just, I don't, but some of them are really good. But there's, I just found this Clifford Brown record. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a weird, like, compilation or something. or I don't know what it is. So I was trying to look it up, but it's in, like, French or something. Okay. I don't know what language it is. It's mm-hmm. either that or Italian. I couldn't really tell. Yeah. But it's really good. Yeah, man. And it's yeah. just, like, I know there's not that many records of Clifford. Right. And yeah. the fact that – so, wait. I'm just curious now from, like, recording nerd. Is, like, how who, – who recorded him? I don't know, man. There's – I don't, I don't know if maybe he was just like recording himself on like a tape recorder or okay, something like that. Because the, be, the yeah. quality isn't like great, but um, I don't I couldn't imagine that someone was just like sitting in the yeah. room with him while he was shedding. You know? Because it, you know what's funny, man, is some of those old recordings, especially with YouTube, mm-hmm. it's just like you listen to some of these recordings of like Art Tatum, and it's like, who's the guy yeah, in the back exactly. of the bar <laughs> recording this guy? Right. Or like next to and it, and it's not that it sounds bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not that it's good, but yeah. it's like. The fact that you can just hear Art Tatum and you hear people talking, it's just Unreal. like, it's kind of crazy, man. It's really nuts. Yeah. So the fact that, yeah, okay, so I got to check this out. Mm-hmm. So you kind of got this idea from, I mean, partly from Clifford, but that idea, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a cool. So going back and kind of editing, yeah. I like that. And there's also um, a, like a tape of Monk practicing, actually. I forget the name of the tune that he's playing, but like someone edited it together so that it's like, like there's a uh, recording of him playing in the practice room, like the specific tune, and he's kind of like again, like ironing out his mistakes, okay. and sort of like um, solidifying like what he wants, kind of the loose arrangement of the tune to be. Okay, and like while he's soloing, he's like kind of working out certain ideas, and then they like fast forward to like him recording it or like a live like bootleg. And you hear, or yeah, and you uh, hear like all the same. I stuff. love it. I love it. And okay. the way that he, I think that's the cool thing about. Um, I mean, a lot of those like bebop era guys, like you hear Bird or Bud, mm-hmm. and I feel like they, you know, you you can tell that you have to prepare so much to get to that point. Right. But I think the mystery is in how they're able to make it sound so spontaneous. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Right. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just they're, you know, they understand. Yeah, you're right. I mean, but they understand. They, they're so free with it that they can. Yeah. You know, it takes. You know, it takes a while to get in shape, but then once you're strong, right. you can do all these crazy things. You're like, exactly. how is this guy lifting? Man? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I get what you're saying. Okay, right. cool, man. Well, I mean, we don't have much time left, mm-hmm. but um, I know you got the – are you guys going to rehearse right now? Is that what's happening? Yeah. rehearsing with the big band. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. Well, um, I'm trying to think if I have – I had one more thing I wanted to ask you, and mm-hmm. now I'm drawing a blank. Um, well, anyways, what's – so where can people find you, find out about – I know you got a, w- a website and stuff, mm-hmm. obviously. So what is – what's the website? It's just uh, csoalexander.com. Dot com. Okay. Yeah. And then you're on – what's the Instagram again? Uh, Alexander Music. Music. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Yeah. So I got to check out the Clifford Brown stuff. Yeah, definitely. And I'm going to send you that, that West thing. Please do. Yeah, the Mikosa yeah. thing. Yeah, man. And I, I found – there's – yeah, I make – all my students learn it, man. You're going to love it. Yeah, I'm sure. If you haven't heard this yet, you're going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just him, solo guitar, just shredding. Yeah, man. It's in A major, and it goes from A major, to, and then he's in A minor, and then he's oh, back man. in A major. Jeez. And there's like a Stairway to Heaven moment. <laughs> okay, cool. Before Stairway to Heaven. Like, it's great. Dude. You're going to love yeah, it. Yeah, maybe maybe Jimmy Page heard that. <laughs> dude, I would not be surprised. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like, you, you know, I mean, yeah, I wish we had more time, but, like, you know what's funny is that, like, I was reading somewhere. I got to show you this other record. There's a Hendrix mm-hmm. record. It's called uh, not Nine to the Nine U- to the Universe. That's it. That's yeah, the one. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, wait. Is it that one? Is that the one where he's – anyways, if it's that one on the back, I was reading it, mm-hmm. and it it was saying how he was, like, really getting into, like, jazz stuff like he was really? hanging okay. out with Rasan Ron Kirk wow. in Jeez. in uh I'll take a picture I'll send okay, it to please you yeah, do yeah. That, yeah. and it's just like this whole you know it's it's the back of the record so it's just some guy talking about it but it's just like you see how those guys are hanging out with yeah, each other totally and it's like you kind of forget that like especially as us as guitar players it's like Hendrix and all the stuff you mentioned before it's like right it can't, it's like right overlapping with totally. the other. It's like it's totally. crazy. I and mean, on that same record, there's like some cut with uh, Larry Young on organ yeah. and Dave Holland. 100%. On bass. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. Man, they were just like all mingling. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, man. And then, it, and then it got, you know, the whole folklore of like him supposedly was going to work with Miles. Yeah. Like, <sighs> yeah. Dude, nope. that would have been so sick. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I don't even know what that would have sounded like, but to even just think about it. Yeah. 
like that would have been so interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's what like Miles was going for. On, yeah, like, those electric records. Is he like wanted McLaughlin to play like Hendrix? Yeah, he wanted Pete Cozy to play like Hendrix. Yeah, and, man, you know. it's crazy. <sighs> yeah, I mean that's it's crazy, man. Miles is just so in touch with like he just that guy's incredible. Yeah, he's just his sense of where cult music and culture exactly. is going is just so yeah. Anyways, yeah, no. all right, man. Well. I don't want to keep you. You got to go. So yeah, thanks, thanks for, for doing me. this, man. Appreciate and I look forward to your concert. And um, guys, check out Cecil's work and check out the uh, the tour if you can. Where are you guys going next real quick? Uh, so we're playing one show in D.C. at the Library of Congress in December. And then uh, January, things kind of like pick up again. Okay, so cool. we have Lincoln Center, uh, like January 11th and 12th. Um, and then we go to, I want to say, Blue Note Napa okay. after that. Uh, the Roxy in LA on the 18th of January, um, and then like Mexico City. Oh, sick, dude! Yeah, yeah, Mexico City's crazy. All right, sweet man. Well, thank you. Thanks, I man. appreciate you, man. You sound great, dude. I thank can't you, wait to man. hear Likewise. the concert tonight. So, all right, man. Thanks, well, thank Louis. you, bro. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm.